Hello! Today I'm joined by Mr. Kevin Black, uh, Ray Little Britain and Blackie's Brewery. Hi, Sting. Fine. Uh, to be back on. Yeah. Uh, today we're reviewing um, a brewery that's uh, got a fun part in uh, Kevin Black's. He likes their beers, you know. Local to him. Oops. Fuller's Black Cab State. Now, Stuart, have you had this before? Yeah, um, for people watching, um, I put the reviews of myself, that when I did the beer, uh, and also Mr. Kevin Black, uh, when he reviewed it. Oh. Uh, it's all in the description too. bar below. Uh, also the link for Kevin Black's channel, uh, Real Ale of Britain, um, where he reviews local beers as well as beers from all over. Uh, but as of late, it's all Yorkshire beers. <laughs> there we go, folks. Black Cab style Fuller's Brewery. I was probably one of the first to have this on cask about two years ago. It must have been around this date. Absolutely cracking beer on cask. As you can see, there's a light little bit of smoke in this there. And as always, put it under the Fuller's goggle. I've got my dimpled glass. Old British style glass. Yeah. Um, now, uh, Kevin Black. Uh, the Black Cab takes its name from the Hackney Carriage. Because the Kevin looks deeply black. Smell. Now, I, I, I have to I'm not a massive Fuller's fan, but um, this is always probably my favourite of the Fuller's, mainly because I'm a big Stout fan. Um, this one pours Jet Black, Stuart, Jet Black, yeah. with a lovely, just a, over a one finger head, which is just off white in colour. Mine's slightly cocoa brown. Uh, so when you first had this, this did this uh, Fuller's be a uh, make you inspired to do, to help you with your, your own brews? I think I think um, out of all the Fuller's beers I've had, this Black Cab Stout was one of the ones, especially on cask, where I was like, oh my good word, it was it was absolutely outstanding. And then I, I managed to source four or five bottles from Az at the time, um, and when I drank it, I was like, actually. If I produce a stout, I need to produce it like this. What is absolutely fantastic about the, this beer, on the nose, you get this beautiful burnt caramel. Yeah. Like buttering. I mean, which that's... Is, which is very... Which is very... Uh, very <laughs> I was going to say, it's very sim similar for every Fuller's beer, that buttery car caramel. Hmm. Definitely get that black tree colour. Yeah, you get that lovely deep toffee note here too. Dig in. Mm. Oh. Yes, yes, yes. So I haven't had this beer in over probably over a year. But oh my good god. It's still a nice beer. Mm. So what was your first uh, Fuller's beer that, you, that inspired you to have such love for their beers? My first Fuller beer would have been London Pride, and to be honest, I'm not a big I'm not a big fan of it. Sure. Um, out of all their beers, I think my favourite would have to be London Porter, Black Cab Stout, and Golden Pride. Well, the only time we ever get Fuller's majority of the time is via the beer festivals and it, I think the majority of the beer festivals um, I think the one time the Uddersfield beer festival was sponsored by Fuller's and the that beer was like 8.45 the London Porter, the Pride uh, and I think is it the Gales beers? Yeah yeah Gales yeah uh, we Gales the, was the other 
over. And sometimes it's nice that the bigger breweries sponsor these brewer, uh, these beer festivals that yeah. showcase all these up and coming microbreweries. So that was my first experience of Fuller's beers via uh, beer festivals. Yeah. And you know, I'm quite lucky, is in we've got quite a lot of Fuller's pubs um, in and around Reading, and we're so close to London. But at the same time, uh, Fuller's, Fuller's is one of them uh, breweries, and you know, especially their pubs. I don't really go much into because I prefer their specialist beers, so their vintage beers, which I would like to age. Yes. And come the winter time, you know, getting their winter porter or their uh, chocolate porter, the London porter, you know, that for me is the, you know, some of their best beers. I think their ESB and their Pride, they're okay, but they're nothing special. Ah, okay. Um, yeah, it's great because I've never been a fan of either of them. Um, when I first started drinking them, I, I was kind of keen on ESB, but when I started getting more into more ESB beers uh, from Yorkshire, and I was, <laughs> it, it's sad not to be a fan of such beers, uh, but. I mean, um, it was via Amanda Hunt, uh, who, via beer mills, I'd send the Yorkshire beers, and she'd send me beers from her next to the woods, like Trin and uh, Fuller's. And although we, me, I, I shared all the beers I got through the bottle share with my brother, uh, we was never too overly keen on the vintage range. We realised a lot of the Fuller's vintage do get better with age. The freshly bottled... Yeah. Yes, yes, and hence why, Stuart, what I do is I always buy two of each bottle, so I always drink one fresh to see what's like, and then what I do is I normally leave them between five to ten years, um, at the minute I've got a very nice uh, collection of them vintage beers, uh, I think that I've got, just there in September, picked up in 1987, the original uh, first vintage beer, so I might have it this Christmas. I did see um, the Fuller's 2014 uh, on the Ale Trail yesterday uh, yeah. at the Waitrose. And I think yes. yeah. Waitrose are common for selling it, the vintage yeah. rate. Yeah, Sainsbury's used to have the right to it, but I think Waitrose has taken that over now. Stuart, was it still £4.50 a bottle? It was a little cheaper, I think, about £4. Oh, all right, because it's still need to pick up two, so... Now, um, as it, this beer warms, um, this is probably the most well-known style in the UK other than Guinness and Murthy's because of its big brand name. Uh, what other stouts would you say are big market beers? Well, you've got Martin's Oyster Stout. Mm. Um, yeah. You've also got, um, you've got a bottle in your chiller, the Nor uh, Hook Norton, their double stout. See, that's a beautiful year. Yeah, and you've got Sadler's, Mud City Stout. Sadler's, you've yeah, Mud City Stout's very good. What's, um, what's that other brewery? Hotback Brewery, Entire Stout. See, that's not too no. common outside yeah. Reading area, though. South, yeah, yeah. Uh, you've got the Oyster Stout, I think that's what, is that what you mentioned earlier? From, from Marston, yeah. Yeah, from Marston's. Um, yeah. So you've probably got, for British st stouts, you've got the Marston's Oyster Stout. Yeah. You've got the Sadler's Mud City Stout. Yeah. Um, you've got the, what's the one we said? Oh. Oh, the, Hook Norton. Double Hook Norton. Yeah. Um, out of those four, uh, five. Would you rate this up there with them, or would you say theirs is better than this? I would say, out of all them beers, the Hook Norton Double Stout is the best. This would come in a close second. See, yeah. I'd, I'd say Hook Norton is one, uh, Mud City as second, because I think Sadler's, the all beers are okay, but that Mud City is probably Mud one of the best. The, the good thing about Mud City Stout, Mud City Stout stands out because there's that nice vanilla, sweet mm. nose and finish on the beer. Um, classifying it as a, as a proper, when 
when I say proper stout, yeah. take that vanilla out of it, and you talk about bitterness of beers, they would probably all equal out exactly the same. Mm. So I see Mud City Stout as a more of a specialist stout than a your bog standard stout. So uh, which out of the stouts was your first stout? Mine was the Marston's Oyster Stout. Still a favourite from the Indian pub. Yeah. Mine was uh, Marston's Oyster Stout as well. And it was in bottle form. Yeah. Time. And, you know, Claire still to this day, when she goes to the supermarket, she would always pick me some up because it is a solid beer. It is. I mean, it, it, I mean that's probably on the same level as this beer here because of the same amount of respect that brewery gets, Marston's, and you get Fuller's. <laughs> Um, now, compared it to, um, because it's a kind of a newish brew, uh, yeah, what to compare it to the microbreweries? Yeah. So, if you think of, let me see, if you think of, I'm trying to think of someone local and one of the beers you've had. We, uh, you, when you were down in Reading, you had um, West Park Breweries, Tennis and Stout. We had it in the Hill House. Yeah. What was, um, Siren? We had Siren Crafts, uh, Broken Dream. Yes, I mean, uh, that's, that's a stout. I, <laughs> <I'll> <laughs> it's, a, it's a completely different, it's a completely different stout, you know. Compare, put Siren Craft to this, and Siren Craft is up here. Ah. Uh, and then everyone else is, is uh, ah. falls below. Being an Irishman, you know, uh, you've got all those. Beamish. Um, yeah. Be Beamish, it's a beautiful stout. And that is, what sucks <laughs> is that we don't get as much Beamish over here as we should do. Yeah. Um, but you've got the Beamish. I would say Murphy's, uh, Guinness, which is, well, I think the only reason Guinness is so popular is it's been going for so long. Yeah, yeah. But as you, as you know, you've been to Ireland, you've sampled the stouts. For you, out of all the Irish stouts, what's the best? Beamish. By far. By far. Yeah. Because Beamish has got deep roasted coffee nuts and a light chocolate, chocolate yeah. to it, whereas Guinness is just roasted malts. That's it. When I had, uh, I had tins of uh, Murphy's this, this past week with um, Jay Tirio, yeah. I mean, and everybody says, oh, Murphy's is terrible, it's tins, commercial. Murphy's fine. But as soon as you pour that out, chocolate straight away. Murphy's, then, is, Murphy's, is, Murphy's is a good stout. Murphy's has been given a bad name in England. Is it, you know, people always say, you drink Murphy's on keg in England, you'll get the squirts. Yeah. Again, no, no, but what it is is stouts don't travel too well. Yeah. So yes. if you can get a stout made fresh um, from where actually it was made or close to where it was made, it tastes ten, uh, ten times better. So we get our Guinness we get in Belfast actually comes from England. It's strange. because And it's all because of the UK and Ireland divide. Mm. I mean, so when, I, we're, when I visited uh, Ireland, a lot of the Irish people don't even drink stouts cause, because it takes to, too long to get a beer. They drink alcohol. Sure? <laughs> <laughs> That's right for sure. Uh, they all drink like uh, lagers because they realise Guinness takes so long and all they want to do is get drunk. <laughs> and I don't know about that now, Stuart. <laughs> <laughs> um, but Normally, that's why that's why they invented the whiskey chaser. <laughs> yes, um, but you had um, did you recently have a beamish in like a special tin box or sort of thing, or didn't get around to drinking yeah. it? It was a beamish. Uh, oh, what was it? Beamish, which was aged in a Jameson cask. Yeah, so it's double Irish. Double Irish, yeah. Uh, still ha haven't managed to drink it yet, but uh, maybe that's beer. That's maybe that's a beer we take to Yorkshire. Speaking of Yorkshire, we've we've got our own stouts here. We've got Sam Smith's chocolate stout, uh, Sam yeah. Smith's uh, extra stout, which is almost very close to the Irish 
uh, Guinness. Because yeah. it's such that richness. I mean, uh, the Guinness that we get over here in the UK is completely different. Terrible. <laughs> I don't touch it. <laughs> I'm here. I'd rather I'd rather drink John Smith's. <laughs> now, as as it warms, it's get, it's getting a bit thin. There's not as chocolate taste there. It's almost like um the the ESP. It's chocolate yeah. milk. Yeah. What you do? What you do? You start to get is when it warms up, you get more of that butteriness. Yeah. Come through. The beer becomes very very thin, and then as you said, you know. You get that tartness of an ESB. Yeah, I mean, that, I think that's what puts me off a lot of Fuller's beers because of uh, the butteriness. What, Stuart? I don't know if you've tried this on cask, right? But on cask, it is a completely different beer. Mm. It is a proper, well balanced roasted stout. All you get is roasted notes in the bottle. It's quite sweet. Is the bottle pasteurized? I'm guessing. Yeah, it is. It would be. All their stuff except for their 1845 is all bottle conditioned. Mm. Sorry, it's all pasteurized, everything else except for 1845 mm. and the vintage deals. Um, yeah, I mean, I, 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 every time I see it, I always think, oh, I, I like that beer. And then I drink it, and then I, I don't quite like it. You know, if you, if, it's not one of those yeah. sit around beers. No, it's one of them ones, you know, you, again, part of the reason why, Stuart, I haven't had it in over a year, you know, there's better, there's better spits out there to drink. Yeah, but, I mean, you know, this was one we talked about reviewing for the last six or seven months, and we'll get yeah. around to doing it, so it's great, cheers. Cheers. But, um, any final taste notes and stuff like that? I think when the beer warms up. It becomes very, very thin and very, very caramelly with uh, toffee uh, hints to it. Overall, for me, it's it's just your average average bottle stout. And in comparison to the what our, our, our mutual first stout, uh, how, how does it compare to the oyster stout in longevity? I think so the I... oyster stout, with the oyster stout, it keeps its flavour from top to finish. As it warms up uh, with the oyster stuff, you get more of a roasted bitterness to the beer. Yes. Where this seems to go even more sugar. Um, but uh, for new stop drinkers and ale drinkers, would you recommend it? I would not because of the bitterness. It kind of off putting. Yeah. And I don't wouldn't recommend it as a stout. No. No. And then... if someone was to turn around, if, sorry, Stuart, if someone was to turn around to me and say, Describe beer, I would say it's a weak porter. Yeah. That's that's what it would be. I mean, um, what's the other thing? Um, yeah, I mean, you wouldn't recommend it to a new ale drinker because you'd want some to inspire them to, to try more beers. And this this doesn't inspire me to drink more beers because it, it's got that almost like varnishy aftertaste. Definitely. And I do you know what I think it is? And I need to ask Amanda, but I reckon this beer is King Golden's in it. And that's what's given it that. Or maybe a little touch of Willemart hops. Well, it does say uh, the Fuggle and Golden hops creating a satisfying bit Oh! There you go. I didn't even, I didn't even see that. I, mean, the pres I do like the new presentation of their bottles. Yeah. They look, um, they look good, don't they? Yeah. And where as an owner. Oh, yeah. Fuggles and Golden. Sorry, go ahead. You know, this is, guys, the real ale of Britain. He's writing a book on beers in Britain, and he doesn't read the ball. Um, no, no, no. I couldn't see it at the bottom, but it's on the bottom line. Ah. Uh, but, um, yeah, I mean, um, Amanda. Really good person. Um, used to work for Fuller's, and she, she we, we always go to her for Fuller's information, and so she'd know a lot more than we would. I think Amanda is back at Fuller's again. Is she? 
That's good. I think she is. Yes, she is. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, I, I, would, I mean, yeah, I mean, um, recommending stouts um, other than the oyster stout, I, I'd recommend that to a first time ale drinker. Yeah, yeah. Or Beamish. Yeah, and even cans of Beamish if you can get them. <laughs> And I'd recommend people visit Ireland because it's such a beautiful place. And if you, if you go to the old rural places, it's almost like stuff back in time. Yeah, yeah, it is, it is. But uh, when, the Yorkshire, when the Yorkshire man eats the Irish man. <laughs> uh, thanks again to Mr. Kevin Black. Uh, really, and check out the link for his channel below, where he reviews a lot of uh, beers from Yorkshire and beyond. Yeah. Cheers, uh, folks. Slam a car. Slam that car door. That's what uh, Sir Slam a car. <laughs> <laughs>